People of Earth, welcome. So today we're going to design a 210 millimeter first person view drone racer. You've probably heard a lot about drone racing recently. It's definitely taking off and it's going to be a mainstream sport within the next uh, right now actually. By the time you see this, it'll be a mainstream sport. So the first thing we're going to do is in our sketch menu, create new sketch. Select our plane. I like to design looking down on the world. In your sketch menu, we're going to draft out a center diameter circle from world center and drag out and punch in 210 millimeters. Minus the propellers, just about everything working in drones is metric. Next step is back into the sketch menu and select your line tool. And from world center, drag up and create a line as a guide tool. Hit escape, select your line, and hit the X key to create a construction line. Repeat the process from drone center to right, escape key, select the line, X key. The most essential part in designing a drone is to assure that your motor mounts are equal distance or square from each other. So what we want to do is measure out a 45 degree arc off of our center vertical and center horizontal line. So I'm going to go back and, and select my line tool one more time. And again, from world center, I'm going to drag out. These I'm going to type in 45 degrees. I'll convert this to a construction line by hitting X on my keyboard. And I'll do the same for the circle itself. Next up is to create a motor mount. So I'm going to go into my sketch menu, center diameter circle, select my 45 degree arc line, drag out and type in 25 millimeters. This is just about an inch. Now I'll use the, I'll use this little handy arrow tool. It tells me I'm 25 millimeters in diameter and point it straight up and down. Next feature in the motor mount, we want to create a clear space for the motor's drive shaft to spin freely. So I'm going to go into my sketch menu and select my center diameter tool once again. I'm going to zoom in on my motor mount, make it nice and big and center to your screen. And from from motor mount center, I'm going to drag out and type in five millimeters. Plenty of space for the motor shaft to spin freely. Next again in the sketch menu, I'm going to select my center to center slot tool. Five squares off your center diameter circle. I'm going to click and drag out and create a motor mount slot. And this is going to be four millimeters. Four millimeters is plenty of room to mount a 3M motor mount screw to. Let's drag it in. Give it plenty of space from the outer diameter circle. Let's drag it in a little bit. Very good. So next, I'm going to right select my motor mount slot. I'm going to go into my sketch menu and scroll down to circular pattern tool. So with the slot selected, all 11 elements, I'm going to select my center point and choose motor mount center. It puts in a default of three. I'm going to bump this up to four and boom. Now let's look at what happened here. So this layout provides clean, even wire flow from your motor down to the drone center, which is perfect for the position of the power distribution board. So with that done, we're going to right select the motor mount back in the sketch menu. And once again, select your circular pattern tool. 48 elements selected, that's correct. Select your center point, and this time select drone center. Again, by default, it'll create three. Bump this value up to four, resulting in motor mounts that are perfectly square. Next, we need to make the component plate to hold all of your electronics. So back into the sketch menu, select your center rectangle tool, from drone center, drag out, and we're going to put a value of 160 by 45. Perfect. Next, we're gonna create the booms or the arms for the drone using our three-point arc tool in the sketch menu. So select the three point arc tool going directly beneath in line with our motor mount slot tools. We'll select the upper left motor mount and drag down to the same position on the bottom left motor mount. Now drag in so the arc just touches the component plate and click off. Repeat the process for the right side. Make sure your three point arc tool is selected. Go right beneath the right motor mount slot tool. Click on the outer circle and drag down to the same corresponding position on your bottom right motor mount. Drag the arc so it just touches your component plate and click away. Now let's repeat the process for the top and bottom using the circle construction line as a guide. This time we're going to select the left top motor mount to the corresponding position on the top right motor mount and drag in and click. Now repeat the process one last time for the bottom using the circle construction line as a guide. Select the bottom left motor mount, drag over to the same position on the right motor mount, click and drag in and click. Hit escape. Go back to your selection tool. Next, we'll tangent constraint the arcs to the motor mounts. This will allow you to adjust the scale and the width of the motor booms themselves as you see fit. So select your right arc and in your sketch palette, select tangent constraint, select the motor mount, select the arc tool, tangent constraint, motor mount. Okay, now you see how the arc has snapped. Well, we can adjust this by simply grabbing the arc and dragging it where it needs to be placed. Again, click your arc and drag it out. 
and place it right on the component plate. So with boom arms, what we want is that they are about the same thickness as your propellers. So in this case, we'll be using four to five inch propellers. A four inch propeller is about 10.5 millimeters across. So we want our booms or our arms to be about 12 millimeters in thickness. So select your arc and drag it in. And about there is pretty good. You don't have to adjust it much. And let's just do one more inspection. Here's our measure tool. And we're at 12. That's pretty good. We're going to leave it there. Next is to create the mounting holes for our power distribution board. So I'm going to create a guide square for that. I'm going to go back to sketch menu, select the center rectangle tool, go to drone center and drag out, type in 30 0.5 millimeters by 30.5 millimeters square. Now I'll go around and I'll make these lines instruction tool by hitting X on my keyboard. So next back into the sketch menu, center diameter circle, go to a clear corner on the square and drag out four millimeters. Hit OK. So from here we're going to use our rectangle pattern tool. So I'm going to right select my circle, go into sketch, scroll down to rectangle pattern tool. Now with the horizontal arrow selected, I will type in a value of minus 30.5 millimeters and I will make the quantity two. Next, I'll select my vertical arrow tool and drag down and type in a value of 30.5 by two. Hit return. And now we have the mounting holes for our power distribution board. So I'm going to repeat this process one more time for the additional hardware that's required on your motor mount plate. So from sketch menu, center rectangle tool, from drone center, click and drag out. And let's enter a value of 145 by 35. Click return on your keyboard. Now once again, select the lines on the rectangle and hit X on your keyboard, creating a construction guide. Now just like the power distribution board, we're going to go from sketch menu, center diameter circle, from top right corner, click and drag out, enter a value of four, hit return. And once again, right select the circle, sketch menu, rectangle pattern tool, enter a value of minus 35, a quantity of two, click on your vertical arrow, enter a value of minus 145, and a quantity of four, hit return on your keyboard, and done. Okay, so now we have the hardware mounting points for your standoffs properly positioned. And that's pretty much it for the motor component plate. From here, what we'll do is we'll extrude the frame into geometry. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my view cube and adjust the perspective from the modify menu. I'm gonna use the press pull tool or just hit Q on your keyboard. So now go around and select all of the components of your airframe. Now type in a value of three millimeters and hit return. And boom, there's our motor component plate. So next we'll need to round out all the corners and sharp edges on this plate. We're gonna do that by using our modify fillet tool. From modify, select your fillet tool or hit F on your keyboard. Zoom in so you can work with the airframe. Select the corner one after the other. Next enter a value of five millimeters. Hit return, excellent. We've just made the airframe a lot tougher. It can take a crash fine from here. Next, we'll do the same for the corners of our sharp edges on our component plate. Once again, modify fillet tool, select all the corners, rotate view, select the corner. When complete, enter a radius value of five millimeters. Perfect. This motor component plate is basically done. Next, we're gonna to need to make our top component plate. It's a separate plate meant to hold the battery as well as sandwich all the components together and complete the airframe. So from your browser hierarchy menu and turn on the original sketch, select it, right click and scroll down to edit sketch. This will bring us right back to where we left off. I'm going to add some further details for components such as battery straps, FPV camera slots, an antenna mounting hole for the first person video camera. Then I'm gonna cut some additional holes into the top component component plate just to lighten the mass. To begin with, let's establish the first person video camera mounting slot by going into sketch, center point slots. In the forward section of the drum, use the construction guidelines and click, drag out, and let's make this a value of 1.5 millimeters. Now let's add battery straps to hold the battery down. Sketch menu, center point slot. Let's start off center frame. Use the construction guides once again, drag out, and make the thickness a value of two millimeters. Click OK. Let's zoom in. I'm going to adjust the distance and placement of the battery strap slot. Make the battery slot roughly 30 millimeters in length. And let's place it center to drone center. Off on the right side, not too close to the edge, and not too close to the screw holes. When we're there, click away. Right select the battery strap slot. Back to sketch menu. Scroll down the rectangular pattern tool once again. Horizontal handle. Type in a value of minus 39. 
0.5. Quantity count of two. Zoom out a little bit. Now with the vertical handle, drag down, type in a value of minus 50 with a quantity count of two. Select OK. Excellent. In the rear of the drone, right about here, we're going to use our center diameter circle tool, drag out a six millimeter circle, and this will give us an option to mount a first person video camera antenna. Okay. Next, we'll reduce some mass by cutting some additional holes into the top plate. You can do this with any number of shapes, or you could try to write your name, or even add a logo. To keep it simple, I'm just going to go back to my sketch menu and use my center rectangle tool. Now in the front of the aircraft, to where the center construction line meets the arc, and drag out, and type in a value of 25 by 25 millimeters. Hit return on your keyboard, and once again, right select your square. And once again, sketch menu, rectangular pattern tool. Using the vertical handle, drag down and enter a distance value of minus 100 with a quantity count of three. Hit OK, and we're done. So now we have a top component plate. Once again, I'm gonna use my view cube, adjust my view. I'm gonna hit Q on my keyboard, the hotkey for press pull, and I'm gonna select my top component plate. Should be done in about three clicks. Now enter a value of 1.5 millimeters and return. Now go back to your browser and in the bodies hierarchy, select your second body down and in modify, select your move tool. And let's grab the top handle and drag out 20 millimeters. Hit okay. And there we go. Let's inspect your work. Make sure that all the slots and holes are pretty clear from each other. You don't have anything overlapping that could compromise the frame. So now I'm going to go back to my browser hierarchy. I'm going to turn off the sketch, clear up the view, and just like I did with the motor component plate, I'm going to round out the corners on the top component plate. Go to Modify, Fillet Tool, or hit F on your keyboard. Zoom in to where you can work with the top frame. Select all the corners. One, two. Use your view cube to spin around. Zoom in. Select three and four. Type in a value of five millimeters and hit return. Okay, now I'm gonna repeat that process for all these squares and select all of the square corners and input the value one time and I'll be done. Speed this along, I'll go as fast as I can. Okay, so now I have all the corners of all the squares selected in my top component plate. Enter a radius value of five and hit okay. Excellent. Two more little details to add, and we can call this airframe done. So from the browser hierarchy, I'll turn my sketch folder back on, and now I'm going to add the missing slot to hold the first person video camera down by using my press pull tool. Hit Q on your keyboard, select the forward slot, dragging up, will turn the slot red, meaning it's cutting through the airframe. So I have a matching slot top and bottom. When I'm happy with it, I'll hit OK. Now that two slots are lined up, I can add my first person video camera. So next I'm going to show you a really awesome feature about Fusion 360. It has to do with adjusting features that you may not be satisfied with or want to change within your model. You don't have to go back and remodel anything. All you really have to do is adjust the original sketch and the features will update. So for this example, I'm going to adjust the FPV camera bracket mount from one long slot down to two small slots. This is what I'm going to do. Let's just go back to my hierarchy and in the sketch folder, select my sketch and scroll down to edit sketch. And that brings us right back where we left off. I'm going to zoom into the camera bracket slot. I'm going to select one of the lines in the slot. I'm going to hit D on my keyboard. That's going to dimension the length of the slot. I'll drag it out. And now you can see that I now have a value of 20.9 millimeters. I want to change this down to 6 millimeters. So I'll just hit 6 on my keyboard, hit return, and boom. I'm pretty happy with that placement. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right select that slot. And again, go into sketch menu, rectangle pattern tool. With the horizontal handle selected, I'm just going to drag out and position it so the center slot that's generated is dead center to my construction line. That's minus 15 millimeters, but now I want a quantity of two. Perfect. When you're happy, hit return. So now watch what happens to the model. I'll stop my sketch. Now the model is properly updated with a slot to the size that I adjusted, but there's one missing. Well, this is a very easy fix to do. And to do this, we'll just go down so we can see that both the sketch and the model together in the same view. I'll hit Q on my keyboard and I'll select the new slot and simply drag it so it cuts through both airframes. Hit return and we're done. So now I'm gonna make a first person video bracket to hold the camera into place using these two new slots. Okay, for this next step, first thing we're gonna do Let's go back to our browser menu and turn off the bodies folder. Open the sketch folder and from the sketch menu, I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to select my front plane and from here, I'm going to go to my sketch menu, select my center rectangle tool. From world center, I'll drag out, enter a value of 23.614 
tab 27.014. Hit return. Next I'm going to add a port for the camera lens back to sketch menu, center diameter circle. Again from center, drag out and enter a value of 16.789. Hit return. In sketch menu, center rectangle tool. From top center, click and drag out at a value of 4 by 10.16 millimeters. Repeat that same process for the bottom sketch menu, center rectangle tool, bottom center, 4, tab 10.16 millimeters. Time for a new tool. Go to your sketch menu, scroll down to rectangle, two point rectangle tool. Starting at the top right corner, click and drag down two millimeters, tab 3.58 and return. Do the same for the remaining corners. Sketch menu, rectangle, two point rectangle tool. Left top corner, drag down two millimeters, tab and enter the value of 3.58 millimeters. Repeat for the bottom. Sketch menu, rectangle, two point rectangle tool, two millimeters, tab 3.58 millimeters. Turn. Now one last time. Sketch menu, rectangle, two point rectangle tool, bottom right corner, drag in, two millimeters, tab 3.58. 5, 8, return. Okay, one last feature to add. Back to sketch, center rectangle tool. Now from top center, we want to drag out so it cuts through our center diameter circle. Tab down and enter a value of three millimeters. And we're done. Now we can extrude this sketch into geometry. I'm going to turn my bodies folder back on. I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard. I'll stop the sketch. And before I extrude this into geometry, I'm going to turn off the airframe geometry. So when I extrude the bracket sketch, it doesn't cut into the airframe at all. It just creates a new body. So now I'll hit Q on my keyboard. I'll select my bracket sketch and I'll enter a value of 1.5 millimeters. Okay, next, turn the geometry back on. Zoom out. Select body number four, the first person video camera bracket. Go to modify move and let's put it into place. And let's adjust the view. Grabbing a handle, let's drag the bracket down into position like so. Be sure that it just fits into the bracket mounting slots. Click OK. Next we'll adjust the top and bracket geometry to fit. Correct. Click OK. Now just the top component plate. Modify move and let's just nudge that up a little bit. Okay that looks good. Zoom out. Okay this is a finished basic airframe. Next we want to save our work and get it ready to be carved out. So in the next lesson, we're gonna talk all about how to take this airframe all the way out to CNC carving using our CAM tools.